Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. Here we have a patient with 16 cut RK with what seems like significant nasal decentration. Cataract surgery after RK can be quite frustrating. Despite doing everything perfectly, you'll sometimes have a significant refractive surprise or poor vision quality despite a good refractive result. With 16 or more RK cuts, you can't fit your main cataract surgery incision in between two of the old RK cuts. So you need to make a scleral incision. You need to start at least a millimeter posterior to the limbus. The way I do it is I create a groove in the conjunctiva and sclera. This will prevent chemosis. Be sure that this groove is a bit wider than your planned incision. Then I create a tunnel at least a millimeter into the clear cornea. Be sure to enter the sclera at your scleral groove. You need a gap of tissue in between where you enter the sclera and where the RK cuts start at the limbus. If your incision is too shallow or the gap is too short, then the chance of your incision tearing radially into the previous RK cuts increases. Here I'm performing the capsule erexis, which is when we tear around opening in the capsule of the cataract. We will remove the cataract through this opening. Other considerations in patients who have had RK surgery in the past is to avoid increasing the eye pressure too much during surgery. You want to avoid stressing the previous RK cuts. Likewise, you want to avoid stretching your main incision. This could cause your incision to tear in the periphery and tear into the previous RK cuts. Here, I'm just rotating the cataract to loosen it from the capsule or bag. And next we will be emulsifying it with the FACO unit. I did lower the infusion pressure on the FACO unit so that there's less stress on the RK incisions. Next, I'm just gonna remove the lens material and then polish the capsular bag in preparation for the lens implant. As you know, there are many lens options for patients. My favorite lenses for RK patients are the light adjustable lens and IC8 Aptera. Given the higher possibility of refractive surprises, these lenses are forgiving. With the light adjustable lens, you can adjust the prescription of the lens implant after the eye has finished healing and the prescription has settled. With the Aptera, you have a large depth of focus and aberrant light is filtered out, helping improve vision quality. Neither of these lenses are perfect though, and expectations need to be appropriately managed with the patient prior to surgery. These patients may have irregular astigmatism that cause unwanted symptoms. If the astigmatism is fairly regular and consistent preoperatively, you could consider a toric lens as well. Of course, basic monofocals are always an option, but if it were me and I had RK, I'd rather have an LAL or an Aptera put in my eye. Now that the cataract is out, I'm polishing the posterior and anterior capsule with both the IA tip and then I'll do it with the sweep polisher. And I also like to flush the posterior capsule, especially the central posterior capsule, with BSS. This will minimize the risk of early postoperative PCO and we'll get a fair assessment if a patient likes their lens implant. Next, we're expanding the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic and then polishing that anterior capsule with the Singer Sweep polisher. And then I'm gonna expand my incision to 2.75. How do I decide when to recommend a light adjustable lens, LAL, versus Aptera? Let's assume a patient is a candidate for both. If a patient has light sensitivity from their cornea and not their cataract, and a lot of fluctuating vision, maybe irregular astigmatism, I would lean towards the Aptera. Although the LAL is more likely to eliminate the residual refractive error and help with potential refractive surprises, it's not going to address fluctuating vision or light sensitivity from the cornea. In this patient, we chose the LAL, and thank goodness we did, because despite performing multiple tests prior to surgery, including topography, with consistent readings, we had a significant refractive surprise. Refractive surprises are much more common with 16 cut compared to four or eight cut RK. In my experience, I found hyperopic surprises post 16 cut RK. So expecting a hyperopic result, I aimed for a minus two. A few weeks after surgery, they were close to a plus two and a half. With the light adjustable lens, 
we can knock out most or all of that residual refractive error. Whereas with the Aphthera, we wouldn't be able to. Of course, we're going to wait longer than the minimum 17 days to perform light adjustments. We really want to make sure the residual refractive error is stable. Of course, hindsight is 2020, and sometimes there are two options that are good for the patient, and it's hard to determine which one will be best. Another way you can do this is with the non-dominant eye put in an aphthera, and with the dominant eye put in a light adjustable lens. You can mix and match lenses. Or you can choose the lens for the first eye and see how happy they are with it, and then for the second eye, you can decide if you're going to put the same lens or a different lens. Thank you so much for your attention. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.